function because this uh, merely expanded the pulmonary venules and uh, opens up more capillaries so that the blood continues to, the f to flow with the almost equal uh, ease uh, from the pulmonary arteries. Uh, during the heavy exercise, blood flow through the lungs increasing fourfold uh, to sevenfold. This extra flow is accom accommodated in the lungs in three ways, okay? Uh, by increasing the uh, not the high pressure, thus the uh, flow, uh, blood flow is increased. The increasing the number of uh, open capillaries, sometimes as much as the three folds. Uh, two, by distending uh, all the uh, capillaries and increasing the rate of the flow through the, uh, each capillary more than the two folds. And three, by increasing the pulmonary arterial pressure. In the normal pressure, the first, the first two changes decreases pulmonary vascular resistance so much that the pulmonary arterial pressure rises very little. And even during maximum exercise, this effect is shown is the figure you can see in the figure. You see the before, before okay? In this year. Uh, figure uh, six, uh, uh, six thirty-eight uh, uh, to five. Okay. Under most conditions, the pulmonary vessel acts uh, as a uh, act uh, passive, distensible tubes uh, that uh, enlarge with the increasing pressure and uh, narrow with the de decreasing pressure. Blood is the distributed to the segmented of the lungs in the which the alveoli are best oxygenated. This is the achieved via the following mechanism. What was the mechanism for this one? We mentioned pulmonary blood flow distribution is the control uh, controlled by the alveolar oxygen. Okay. When the alveolar oxygen uh, con concentration decreases below the normal they adjusted the blood vessels constrict, okay? This is contrast with the, circula the systemic circulation, okay? You can, uh, you, you should be remind this uh, point. This is the opposite, opposite to the effect of the normally observed in the systemic vessels. This was, cons was a constrictor effect of the ox low oxygen level distribute blood flow away from uh, poorly ventilated alveoli is is contrast with the systemic uh, circulation okay uh, therefore decreased alveoli oxygen reduces local alveolar blood flow and regulates pulmonary blood flow distribution when the concentration of the oxygen in the air uh, of the alveoli decreases below normal especially when it uh, fa falls uh, falls below uh, seventy uh, percent of normal, uh, mm, uh, that is uh, below uh, seventy-three millimeter mercury pressure oxygen, just uh, blood vessel constrict, with the vascular resistance increasing more than the five folds as extremely low oxygen levels. This effect is opposite to uh, the effect observed in the systemic vessel, which uh, dilate. Uh, rather than constrict in the response to the low oxygen levels. Also, the mechanisms that uh, promote pulmonary vasoconstriction during the hypoxia are the not completely understood. Uh, low uh, oxygen concentration may stimulate release of the vasoconstriction substance or uh, decreasing decrease the release of the vasodilator such as the nitric oxide uh, from the lung tissue very important point okay you remember that for the exam the some studies suggested that hypoxia may directly induce uh, vasoconstriction by inhibition of the oxygen sensitive potassium anion channel in the pulmonary vascular smooth muscle uh, cell membranes when the low partial pressure of the oxygen these channels are blocked leading to the polarization of the cell membrane and activation of the uh, calcium channels, causing influx of the calcium ions, the rise of the calcium concentration uh, then causes constriction of the small arteries and arterioles. 
This effect of the low oxygen on pulmonary vascular resistance has an important function. Okay, to distribute flow of, uh, blood flow, where is the most effective? Okay, this. Uh, that is, if uh, some alveoli are poorly ventilated, uh, so that the oxygen concentration becomes low, the local vessel constrict. This causes the blood flow to flow, blood, uh, the blood to flow uh, through the other areas of the lungs that are better uh, uh, related, uh, providing an uh, automatic control system for the distributing uh, blood flow to the pulmonary areas in the proportion to their alveolar oxygen pressures. Okay. Low oxygen uh, causes the low blood flow. High oxygen uh, causes the high blood flow. It contrasts with the circulation system. The automatic, uh, automatic nervous system does not have a major uh, function in the normal control of the pulmonary vessel resistance, okay? Remember. However, sympathetic stimulation has the significant effect in the constricting uh, the large pulmonary capacity uh, vessels, especially the veins. This constriction of the large pulmonary veins provides a mean uh, by which sympathetic stimulation can displace much of the extra blood in the lungs uh, into the other segments of the circulation when needed to combat a low blood pressure. Effect of the hydrostatic, hydrostatic pressure gradient in the lungs on the regional pulmonary blood flow is very important uh, section. In the normal adult, okay, in the normal adult, the distance between the apex and the base of the lungs is about a thirty centimeter, which uh, creates the twenty-three millimeter mercury differences in the blood pressure. Okay. This pressure gradient has a marked uh, mark effect on blood flow in the various regions of the lungs. Lungs have an apex and the uh, base, and the blood pressure is different, and the hydrostatic pressure is caused the regional uh, uh, pulmonary blood flow in the lungs. In the standing, standing uh, in the vertical uh, position, not in the horizontal or uh, lying uh, position. You all remember that one, okay? And the uh, effect of the hydrostatic pressure gradient in the lung on the regional pulmonary blood flow is very important discussion this year. In the upright uh, dose, we, uh, we mentioned the lowest per, uh, point in the high lungs is normally about 30 centimeters 30 centimeter below the highest point, which represents uh, 23 millimeter uh, mercury pressure differences about 50 millimeter mercury of which is above the heart and the eight below that is the pulmonary arterial pressure in the up uh, uppermost portion of the lungs of uh, standing pressure is about 15 millimeter mercury less than the pulmonary arterial pressure at the level of the heart and the pressure is the lowest uh, portion of the lung is about 80 millimeter mercury greater. We mentioned before and again, uh, uh, um, again, repeat that one. Such pressure differences have the profound effect on the blood flow through the different area of the lungs. This is demonstrated by the lower curve in the figure. Uh, in this figure, you can see which depicts uh, uh, blood flow per unit of lung tissue at the different levels of the lung in the upright person. Upright person, okay? Not lying uh, or the uh, or horizontal uh, position. Note that the, in the standing position, at the rest, uh, there is little flow in the top of the lungs, but uh, but uh, five times as a must, uh, much flow in the bottom. In this figure, you can see, we mentioned before, and you can see blood flow and different levels in the lungs of the upright person at the rest and during the exercise, okay?
Hydrostatic, uh, static pressure gradient in the lungs created three zones of the pulmonary blood flow or uh, zone, zone or regional, regional, regional. Under normal and various pathological uh, lung conditions, any one of the three possible zones of the pulmonary blood flow can be found. Zone one is uh, there is in the top of the lungs, lung. Zone two uh, in the middle of the lung, and zone three in the bottom of the lung. Zone 1, top of, uh, top of the lung, has no blood flow because the capillary pressure never rises higher than the alveolar pressure. In this zone, alveolar pressure uh, bigger than artery and uh, uh, artery pressure bigger than venous pressure. Thus, the capillary are pressed flat. Zone 1 does not occur during the normal conditions. Okay? So, remember. Zone 1 or region of uh, one uh, does not occur during normal condition. It can occur when pulmonary artery pressure is decreased following the hemorrhage, hemorrhage and uh, uh, when the alveolar pressure is increased during the positive pressure uh, ventilation. Not normal condition, okay? Zone two, uh, in the middle of the lungs has an intermittent uh, blood flow that occurs during the systole when the arterial pressure is greater than the alveolar pressure, but not during the diastolic when the arterial pressure is less than the alveolar pressure. Zone 2 blood flow is thus uh, determined by the differences between arterial and alveolar pressure. Zone 2. Zone three, bottom of the lungs. Uh, some of the, uh, the believe the, there is another zone four and just not mentioned in this here and the book and we not uh, focus on the zone four. Just in the zone three, in the bottom of the lungs has a high continuous blood flow because the capillary pressure remain, remains greater than the alveolar pressure during the entire cardiac cycles. In the systole, and systolic uh, and uh, diastolic. In this figure, you can see zone one, zone two, and zone three. Uh, this figure shows the mechanics of the blood flow in the three blood flow zones of the lung. Zone one, no flow. Alveolar air pressure is greater than the arterial pressure. Zone two, intermittent flow, okay, intermittent. Systolic arterial pressure rises higher than alveolar air pressure, but the isolic arterial pressure falls below alveolar air pressure. And zone three in this year, you can see continuous flow, arterial pressure and pulmonary capillary pressure, uh, PPC, remains greater than the alveolar air